Hello and welcome to Only Connect, the show that mixes high and low culture like the marriage of Figaro performed by the Chuckle Brothers. Come on, Cameron McIntosh, make that happen. We'll go 50-50. 60-40? Take it all, I just want to see the show. Here tonight to perform their best rendition of La Triviata are... Oh, on my right. Chris Pendleton, an artist and picture framer who is commissioned annually to paint a picture of a pig for Britain's leading sausage manufacturer. Nick Patterson, a microbiology and virology graduate who enjoys running, playing squash and punting. And their captain, Ned Pendleton, an expert football gambler with a degree in maths who is fascinated by remote islands. United by a taste for travel, they are the road trippers. Ned, you've brought your friend and your dad along tonight. How did you pick the team lineup? Well, I've spent a lot of time in pubs doing quizzes with Nick over the last few years. And I think I've been doing quizzes with my dad for about 20 years, so I thought it'd be finally nice to have a go on TV together, see how we do. Let's see how well this family dynamic works out against on my left. John Stitcher, a philosophy graduate who left a career in banking to become a full-time poker player. Ben Holmes, a customer services advisor who enjoys films about sharks and was once sat on by a horse at a local summer fete. And their captain, Amber Marshall, a substance misuse specialist who once had a pet budgie that could dance and sing to Madonna's Vogue. Everything's Greek to them, but in a good way, they are the Athenians. What is it in particular you all love about the country of Greece? Well, well, I like travelling and the food, and Ben likes history, and, and John's mum was from Greece, and he also likes Greece the movies. Excellent. That sounds like you're well covered for the uh, ancient history section of the quiz. Let's see if that's what comes up. We'll find out what's going to come up by playing the quiz. What's the connection between four apparently random clues? That is all I want to know in round one. Road trippers, you won the toss. You'll be going first. Please choose what used to be a Greek letter but now is an Egyptian hieroglyph. Go with water, please. Water. Nice, simple opening choice. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Andy Dufresne. Well, that's... that's Tim in... Robbins in Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, Shawshank Redemption. Wrongly convicted people. I think we should go next. Yeah, next. Ross Gellar. That's from Friends. David Oh, is it? Oh, he's a paleontologist. Was Andy Dufresne a paleontologist? No, he's a lawyer or something, wasn't he? There's a lot of theme. Anything else? Mm, next. What, was, was he a paleontologist or anything? That's not his name. He's a goal. I have to go next again. What's that? You got anything? Three seconds. Paleontologists. Express that more simply. Um, interested in fossils. I'll accept it. I mean, I think in some cases you just say rock collectors. I think perhaps the term mm. paleontology postdates Obelix the Gaul, but it's all to do with a collection of rocks. That first one, do you know who that is? Well, it's the character from Shawshank Redemption. Yes, and he's a rock collector and he has a rock hammer that he uses to make a tunnel. Ross Geller, he's the uh, fossil collector or paleontologist from Friends. Obelix the Gaul carries the big rocks around. He's a sort of sculptor, I think. He sculpts rocks and Macapaca, you didn't know? Not sure what Macapaca is. It's supposed <laughs> to be the easy one, isn't it? Do you know what it is? The people there? with the small children know what Macapaca is. It's from In the Night Garden. From In the Night Garden, yes. Stone and rock collectors, fossil enthusiasts. Well done. Athenians, what would you like? Twisted flax, please. Twisted flax. What is the connection between these picture clues? Here's the first. Next, please. That's a uh, thingy from 30 Rock. Can't remember his name. Is he voiced a Pixar character? He might be in that selfie from the Oscars. Uh, he was. I don't did they do that? Next, yeah. next, next, please. Uh, no, I guess not. That's not Lee Mack and... Just get the show. Should we have next to the wall? Yeah, go next. Next, please. Next, please. They play their own names on TV shows. Their TV shows are eponymous. Well, they play their own... They play the character in their TV show has their names. So, Tim Vine and Lee Mack play Tim and Lee in... Not Going Out. Not Going Out. Terry and June play Terry and June. Ellen the Generous plays Ellen and... Um, that guy in 30 Rock, I think his character is called Tracy, which I think is his name. That's right. Yes, Tracy Morgan, Tracy Jordan. That's yeah. absolutely right. <laughs> yes, it's not the show itself yeah. as necessarily eponymous, but they play characters with their own names. Sorry, I That's paraphrased. Okay. Yes. Didn't tell. <laughs> That's absolutely right. And which is the best of the shows? Uh, not going out. Um, no, 30 Rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
It's so obviously Terry and June, I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> and if you don't think it is, go onto the internet and just read a list of the descriptions of the episodes. I do that quite often with Terry and June. Just you read the summaries. Terry gets an old garden shed. Unfortunately, he gets himself locked in there when the boss is coming to tea. I mean, <laughs> you can be hysterical just reading descriptions of what happens in the shows. Terry and June is possibly the greatest show of all time. Well done, you get the point. Road Trippers, what would you like? I think two reads, please. Two reads. The music mm. question. You don't look too pleased, but let's see what happens. You'll be hearing the clues. What connects them? Here's the first. I love you. For the way you never doubt. Next. Next. Colors of a rainbow. Of course, I see. So pretty. Colors of the rainbow. Colors Three rainbow. seconds. Seven things. Seven things? Yeah. Not the answer, I'm afraid. Athenians, do you know? We think they were recorded by parents and their children. Who did you think that was at Clue 2? No idea. We went for Unforgettable at number three. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at Clue 2, you've got Barry Manilow and Marilyn Monroe. So, unless not there's related, shock no. news just in. <laughs> No, although you're in the right universe, they are all semi-posthumous duets. Oh. They are songs that living singers recorded with old recordings of people who were not there to attend the studio. So the first one, Elvis Presley and Lisa Marie Presley, oh. that was a parent and child, and it was Nat King Cole and Natalie Cole at number three, but the second one, Barry Manilow and Marilyn Monroe, and the fourth one, Eva Cassidy and Katie Malua. Semi-posthumous duets. So no bonus points, but what would you like, Athenians? Lion, please. Lion. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Films that were named after songs. You're saying it as though you don't think that's the answer. Is it really? I'm afraid it isn't. Uh -oh. <laughs> so you're correct in thinking that it isn't correct. Road Trippers, you'll never go for a bonus. Uh, brothers? Not it, I'm afraid, although you're closer, it's a shame. They are all things created by twins. Oh, I said twins, didn't I? But what no, did you recognise? Men's Society was the Hughes brothers. So that's right. And 500 Miles is... Uh... Is the Proclaimers, nice. that's Charlie and Craig Reed, and the Harvard connection actually is the Winklevi, Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss. It's the one there was a controversy about Facebook because they were friends of Mark Zuckerberg. But the first one, Elizabeth and James, that is a clothing line created by Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Not <laughs> brothers, but sister twins, all things created by twins. So again, I can't award a bonus, but I can offer you a choice of questions. Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus. OK, what links these clues? Here's the first. Anything? Um, next. There's musical about a Dickens thing, but I don't know. Fliffers can be anything, isn't it? So, next, I think. Spoiler at the end. Sees dead people. Anything else? No, orphans. Orphans. Is it, orphans? Orphans. It's, 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 it's it gone six months now? Um, next. Got one side. What on earth is this? Three seconds. What? What? What were we going to say? Uh, um, I don't know. I don't know. One side. One side? Mm. No, I don't think I can make that work for all the clues, I'm afraid. So another bonus chance, Athenians. It has no ending. <laughs> Don't see how that works. For you, us. You're, not, you're not a fan of Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's got no ending. It definitely does have an ending. Mm. Oliver is reunited with Mr. Brownlow and formally adopted. It's a lovely ending. No, now, let me tell you where you fell down. 
When you saw the clue, The Sixth Sense, you muttered it's got a spoiler at the end. Yeah. I'll tell you what it's got at the end. A twist. Oh, like twist Oliver, the, the musical based on Oliver Twist, Fliffus is a move in trampolining and the Mobius strip, of course, has a twist. All mm, things oh, with a mm. twist. Had you only used that old-fashioned oh, yeah, word twist. rather than the trendier spoiler, you might have found your way there. Athenians, one question remains. It's the Horned Viper. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next, please. Next, please. Is it London Underground or something like that? Next, please. We think these are error messages you might get on some kind of computerised ticketing system. What sort of computerised ticketing system? We would like system? to say the London Oyster card. The London Underground is the right answer. They are gate error codes on London transport. That is absolutely right. Thank goodness, getting a point at the end of the round <laughs> after all that illogical interchange. I like that. <laughs> 33 means illogical interchange, but I don't know what illogical interchange means. <laughs> but I like the idea of that being a problem when trying to get through a gate. Anyway, after all that illogical interchange, at the end of round one, the road trippers have one point, the Athenians have two. <laughs> Here's a twist. We're going to play the sequences round. There are still four clues. They are still connected, but this time the teams may see a maximum of three because I want to know what comes fourth. Road trippers, you're going first again. Which hieroglyph would you like? I think lion, please. Lion. OK, you're about to see the first in a sequence. What comes fourth? Time starts now. Marty, well, that was the first Oscar-winning film, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Early Oscar-winning film. Yeah, it was. It was the very first. It was fourth. Uh, next. This is Oscar things. What can be built really wild of things? What was Marty being? There's going to be something specific about the Oscars, but I don't know. The part wasn't that early. Either. Next. Which one is this? What's it going to be? Is it black and white films? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. it yeah. Any other black and white Oscars? Shall we go for that? Give all people in it. The artist. The artist is the right answer. You get two points. And what's the connection? It's black and white Oscar winning films um, in order chronological order. That's right, they are the most recent four black and white films to win the Best Picture Oscar in chronological order. Very well done. Athenians, what would you like for round two? Water, please. Water. What would be the fourth in this sequence? It's a picture sequence. I'd like you to describe what you'd expect to see in the fourth picture. Here's the first. Next, please. <laughs> OK, we'd expect to see a spider on the left and a fly on the right. Anything else? Oh, no, oh, an arrow, arrow in the middle. middle. That is exactly <laughs> right. A fly with an arrow pointing across to a spider going right to left, or as you described it, left to right. And why? Because there was an old lady who swallowed a fly, and I don't know why she swallowed a fly. Perhaps she'll die. Exactly then so. Then she swallowed a spider, which did wriggled and wriggled and jiggled inside her and so on. I mean, you could sing it. No, no? I couldn't. I've only ever heard that song sung once this morning by the executive producer in the makeup room, and let me just say it's been the highlight of my series. <laughs> I'm not aware it is a song. I've never heard it sung. Well, you're not going to hear it from me. Can anyone over there sing it? There was an old lady who swallowed a fly, and I don't know why she swallowed a fly. Perhaps she'll die. Beautiful. <laughs> I wish I could give you ten <laughs> bonus points. Mm -hmm. Lovely, a lovely rendition. I can offer you a question. Horned Viper. OK, the snaky question. I hope you get it right. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Friends. Hmm. I think we have to go next, do we? Come here, come here. Next. Oh, is it, is, is it the French glass ramp of some sort? Oh, I don't know, though, is it, though? Is it quite I don't think it is, really, no. Next. Is it friends? It's a site that... Oh, head of the army. Emperor. Um, or something like Napoleon. This is some sort of... I guess it's a I'm not just anything. Emperor. President. Yeah. President, Emperor. Two seconds. Emperor. 
Not the answer, I'm afraid. So, Athenians, do you want to have a go? What did you want to say? I wanted to say, say emperor. Um, Should we say people? <laughs> I think we're out of time. Uh, people, You've got yeah. to say something. People. Not the answer. Now, these are, as I heard you muttering, the concerns of Napoleon Bonaparte. The concerns on his deathbed, in fact, in his last words. And his last thoughts were not for the emperor, but for Josephine. Mm. France, armée, tête armée, Josephine. France, the army, the head of the army, Josephine. That is apparently what Napoleon was thinking about as he expired. Athenians, what would you like? Um, two reeds, please. Two reeds. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next, please. <laughs> Next, please. Okay. Kennedy have a second term. No, no. Kennedy have a second term. There's not been a there's not been a president Kennedy. Kennedy has a Charles Kennedy, so it'd be Clark. No, because it would be Ashdown. Of course. Kennedy Kennedy. In a way, but no. <laughs> Road trippers, do you know? We don't know. Let's say Johnson. And why Johnson? Well, because he succeeded Kennedy as president of the USA. I, I mean, know. let me tell you, I would pay a lot of money to see all of these people as president of the USA. Now, Chris, I'm disappointed. When I looked at this question, I thought, let's see how young the quizzes are, because not everyone will know this. But I would have thought you and I would remember these are the presenters of Game for a Laugh. I thought it was a game. They for sat on the yeah. set left to right. Yeah. You got Henry Kelly, Matthew Kelly, oh. Sarah Kennedy, and the great Jeremy Beadle, yeah. a great quizzer himself. Do these names mean anything to you? The, nothing. Beadle, Beadle does. And, uh, I know the, who the, the Kelly. Are. Oh yeah, Henry Kelly was going for gold, which, uh, other than Lonely Connect, was the best quiz show ever. You never saw Game for a Laugh. I might be. What I'm hoping I'm too young. They play pranks on people. Oh. Oh, like a kind of like a pre-Jeremy Beadle, but with more people. Well, not pre-Jeremy Beadle. It is <laughs> Jeremy <laughs> Beadle. Look. But he had his own, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he had his own later. You yeah. must remember Game for a Laugh, Chris. Just about, yes. Yes. I do, yeah. Yeah, that is funny. them. So yes, in a way, the king at the end there, but officially Beadle was his name. So no bonus points. Road trippers, what would you like? Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Roderick. Does that mean anything? Many bills? Roderick. Anything? Next. Clamis, Grant Arms. That's Carson and Scott, isn't it? Yeah. It's an F. It's not doing the F as well. But what's, what's the number? About Is it the biggest castles or something? Next. Is it something like. Castles in Scotland? It's it like it's sort of like one Balmoral or something. Anything? It's good to a bit of time to come Yeah. Yeah, anything else? What, what this could be? Are they castles? It's one of the Queen Mother used to live, isn't it? So is it? Is it the right? Balmoral? I'm not sure one Balmoral. Three seconds. One Balmoral. Not the answer, I'm afraid. So, Athenians, another bonus chance. Right, one Edinburgh. One Edinburgh. Is the right answer. Was that a random guess at well, the Scottish place? Is it the size of castles or something in the UK? By size, and that's the, and they're the four biggest in Scotland, and their position in that order. No, it isn't. Oh. The numbers. <laughs> I mean, it is castles. The numbers denote money. It's banknotes. These are Scottish uh... banknotes. Banknotes brought out by the Royal Bank of Scotland. On the twenty pound note, you get Brodick Castle. The ten pound note, uh, Glams, then Kellain, and on the one pound note, I mean, there's the odd one, which is a commemorative. I would have accepted, but the common one, Edinburgh castles on Scottish banknotes. But well done, the bonus point to you. And the last question, Twisted Flax. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah. Say centre, spelt the American way. 
Not the answer, I'm afraid. So, road trippers, a last bonus chance of the round. Well, it, it would be a word where um, there's this, in, in America it's spelt without a U, but in, in Britain it is such as Labour. Labour. Absolutely right. Well, or well, colour, well. which is what we went for. I was just thinking that ageing aluminium fetus would be a great name for a band. But yes, it is about the words. Can you talk me through what's happening in the sequence? It's like vowels. It's like E I O U, the vowels. And in America, you don't say one of one of the vowels is missing. From That's American exactly right. It's, it's words that are spelt differently in American English, and the order is that the word aging, you wouldn't have an E in America. They drop an I from aluminium to make aluminum, an O from fetus, F E T U S. So. A U would be next. We simply want to know what is a word that is spelt differently in America to the way it is here. So, very well done. You get a bonus point. That means, at the end of round two, the road trippers have four points, the Athenians have six. <laughs> Time for the connecting wall now. Sixteen jumbled-up clues that the teams have to sort into four connected groups of four while avoiding the red herrings that might try and swim into more than one category. You'll be going first this time. Athenians, so would you like lion or water? Lion, please. Lion, you have two and a half minutes to solve that wall, starting now. Dolls. Yep. There's got to be another doll. Dutch doll, is that something? Hi-hat's a... Hi-hat's a... Drum. Crash. Crash drum, yeah. Voodoo is a type of... They're all symbols, I think. Dutch. Directed films which are back Okay, polytheity. Splash. Splash. And what's the other one? Crack. Cuckoo. No. Rush. Maybe. Maybe keep going, keep cycling. You... Rush is definitely one of them. Right, well, so is Backdraft. Crash is. Alright, oh, okay. In fact, Cuckoo's too early for Ron Howard. He's too young for that, surely. Keep... Unless it was his first one. Shonky but I'll carry on with the dolls. Brilliant. I think shonky might mean dodgy or it's like an Australian word. Yeah, Australian 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 words. Australian words. Pash. Stronger. Stronger. There we go. Right. right so we... Slow. Right, so we've got the films which were we think. Backdraft Apollo 13. And oh, can they be anything else? Is the James Hunt film. But what else could we have here? Yeah, um, Should we do the symbols? So we thought hi hat splash. Crash. Sizzle. Didn't we try that? Should we try it as a group? Yeah. Okay. Can we try it? Sorry. I have splash, crash, and sizzle. That's it. You solved the wall. Very well done. What about the points for the connections? The first blue group starting Dutch. They're all types of doll. They are all types of dolls. Simple as that. The green group. They're all Aussie slang. That's it. Pesh, drongo, barbie, shonky, all Aussie slang. Slang for what? Do you know? Uh, drongo's a a daft person because I used to call my sister that a lot when we were growing up. Right. Pesh is <laughs> snogging. Yeah. Barbie's barbecue and shonky yeah. is. Dodgy. Yeah, rubbish. <laughs> yes, it must be something to do with wonky. It's either not to be trusted or doesn't yeah. work properly. Hi hat, crash, splash, sizzle. All types of symbol or drum. That's it, types of symbol. Quite right. And the last light blue group starting backdraft. They're all Ron Howard directed films. Films directed by Ron Howard. So you found all four groups. You told me all the connections. I'll give you a bonus two points for getting it all right. It's the maximum of ten. Very well done. Time to bring in the road trippers now, give them a new connecting wall, the water wall, and see how they get on with it. You've got two and a half minutes to solve this wall, starting now. Right. Um, Dundee cake, Eccles cake, Angel cake, Madeira, Madeira cake. Is that a Richmond cake as well? Is it a Richmond cake? Yeah, OK, right, let me go through those five. You, you think about something else? London Parks, Hyde, Green, Bushy, Regents. There's people in Ocean's Eleven as well. All right, let's, let's go back to the Ocean's Eleven. Right, so... so Clooney, Pitt, yeah. Cheadle and Mac. Yeah. So let's go back to this um, cakes. Dundee, Dundee, Richmond, Eccles, and it's Angel or Madeira. Yeah, I think so. so. We can get a mark. Richmond can be a park sort of yeah. park yeah. as well, so... Try oh, well, we've got parks. Yeah. Yeah. Try, okay. Try, um... Regent's Park. Green, Green Park, Park, Richmond Park, Hyde Park. Bushy. And Bushy Park. Park, yeah. Right, so yeah. cakes. Three strikes now, Eccles. be careful. Angel. Marbles are cake as well. Marbles definitely. Cake. Okay, so we've got Eccles, Marble, Madeira, Angel, Dundee are cakes. Yeah. So that's just areas of Manchester, yeah. Hyde, Salford, Sale, and Eccles. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's it, you've solved the wall, you made it look easy. So that's four points for the groups. What about the connections? The first blue group starting pit. 
It's, it's people Ocean, in Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's Eleven, yeah. Ocean's Eleven actors. The Ocean series of films. Can you tell me their first names? Brad, Bernie, George and Don. And the next green group starting Regents. It's like parks in London. They are. Can you tell me something else? The royal, royal ones? Parks. They are yeah. royal parks. Royal parks in the London area. The next pink or purple group starting Hyde. So areas of Greater Manchester. They're simply areas of Greater Manchester. Hyde, Salford, Eccles, Sale. And the last light blue group, Madeira, Angel, Marble, Dundee. Cakes. All things I gobbled down while waiting for you to come in to play your turn. They're all cakes. Very well done. So, four points for finding the groups, four for the connections. I'll give you a bonus of two for getting it all right. That's the maximum of ten. Let's have a look at the scores going into the final round. The Road Trippers have 14 points, the Athenians have 16. So it's a close run thing that will be decided by the missing vowels round. We have taken the vowels out of well known names, phrases, and sayings, squished up the consonants, and the teams need to tell me what the disguised clues are. Teams, you will lose a point if you get anything wrong this time, so buzz with care. Fingers on the bells. I can tell you that the first group are all phrases used by Del Boy. Athenians. Rodney Uplonka. Correct. Athenians. This time next year we'll be millionaires. Correct. Road trippers. He who dares wins. Correct. Road trippers. Lovely, lovely. Indeed. Next category: book titles with the colour changed. Athenians. Brown beauty. You got the sense of it. Athenians. And of pink gable. Correct. Athenians. The woman in orange. Yes, it is. Athenians. Aquamarine fang. You're a genius. <laughs> Next category, fictional TV chat show hosts. Athenians. Mrs Merton. Yes, it is. Trippers. Alan Partridge. Correct. Trippers. Pally G. Well done. Athenians. The Kumars. Correct. Next category, British wrestlers. Athenians. Giant haystacks. Yes, it is. That last one was the British Bulldog, but the bell has gone for the end of the quiz, and after an excellent round four, I can tell you that the winners with 25 points are the Athenians. Very well done. Well deserved, if only for Aquamarine Fang <laughs> alone. <laughs> Road Trippers, you are second with 18 points. Very good quizzing. You're not out. You'll get another go later in the series, so we'll look forward to seeing you then. And that's it. Time to pack up for the night. Elvis has left the building. Elvis is our security guard. You might have seen him on the way in. Big Welsh fella, 22 stone, bald on top, glass eye. Let's just say that he and I have plans for later. Goodbye. <laughs>